All right. Hey, everybody. We are live with Alex Hills from Wellington, New Zealand. Alex, welcome to the Action for Assange, Free Assange Vigil. Tell us about what you guys are doing today. Right, well, we had a protest yesterday with the Socialist Equality Group. New Zealand has been very supportive for our campaign, but we didn't really want a partisan protest, so we decided to do our protest today. Um, on the day that everyone was doing them. So right now we're at Parliament, we're, we're which we call the Beehive, because it looks a little bit like a Beehive. And, and um, we're at Parliament at the moment, and in Auckland at the moment, there is a British High Commission, uh, the British Consulate, sorry, um, and same time, 12 noon. So we are literally kicking off the day's events for the whole world, and it feels a little bit like, you know, having collected all those events to list. It's kind of a little bit like New Zealand steering the world from the back end. <laughs> um, a little bit, it feels, it feels like that. And it's great that we are the first to see the light. So I guess it's kind of appropriate that we're kind of gathering as many cities and listening them as possible. So that's been my focus. I haven't had an awful lot of focus on doing the Wellington event. So I'm hoping that I'm going to give someone that role today. <laughs> awesome. Alex, what are you expecting um, to happen this week with Julian's extradition hearing? Do you have any predictions or any feelings on it? Well, I do feel like the, the, the mood has changed. Um, can we move away because I'm hardly hearing what's going on? I do feel like the, the, the landscape has very much changed. Um, I feel like the doctors have made a massive difference. And um, that's fine. Um, the, the doctors have made a massive difference. Nikki Hager's 1,200 journalists, including Chris Hedges, John Pilger, Noam Chomsky, Daniel Ellsberg, it's just an incredible list of thinkers. And if anyone can ignore that and the doctors, I, I, I just don't know. We've also got lawyers who are beginning to write statements as well about how lawless this is and how we are literally throwing out laws, international laws that were laid down during the world wars. Um, so this is a real concern, throwing away people's asylum, kidnapping them, and then holding them without charge in a Mexican maximum security prison. I can't understand how UK can continue like that. Especially seeing, I think, I don't know if anyone's heard about the numbers, but we're talking 20, 30 thousand at least, I think at the end of that March, it looked huge. Maybe it, um, maybe it was less than that, but it just looked so impressive in terms of turnout. I was really, really heartwarmed to see that. Um, this week, I think what's interesting now is that some new information has been raised and we promised that we're gonna get a whole lot of new information. We're gonna start to see the legal strategy um, and my feeling is that the Queen, having pardoned Assange, essentially by saying it's too political for me to comment, she's actually done him a fantastic favour by not commenting. But also, we've 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 got other moves being made as well, so that that are similar. We've got you know the the lawyers last week at the hearing releasing this information about Julian Assange and how he was offered a pardon. And of course, the media is misrepresenting that they would because it's like Russiagate exactly. 3.0. <laughs> but I really feel that's again another sort of indication that we've got two massive pieces of evidence that you know it's just obvious, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. so the Queen of England wrote a response back to a Free Assange supporter, essentially saying that she would not get involved in the case because it was a political case. And That's as right. you and I both know, and I'm sure some of the viewers do, the US and the UK have a treaty on extradition. And it says that a political prisoner or somebody who's accused of a political crime yep. cannot Article be extradited. Yeah, yeah, yep. absolutely. So that's that open and shut case for most people. But if you need more, there is more. We have um, no legal um, meeting with privacy. You know, that's just fundamental, isn't it? We have all of his materials being stolen. We have the fact that he can't even access his own records to have a defense and that he can't access his lawyers for more than a few hours to talk about thousands of pages of documents. So I think that is another key issue that I, I think we're gonna see some movement on, but I'm no political expert. I've read a lot about this, but um, really my only emphasis of doing all this is because of my kids and me wanting them not to be handed this terrible, terrible disaster, stepping off the cliff. It's gonna be very hard to come back, just like Brian, you know, said. <laughs> exactly. So you've been doing events in New Zealand for a while now. Have you seen in, um, support for Julian grow since you started? Oh yeah. Oh my God, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, anyone you talk to on the streets now, I mean, there's a, aside from occasional 
what would I call without being rude weapon me too uh, and the military odd military elderly gentleman who kind of freaks out about the, 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 the privacy thing for the government I have found no one who's who's been informed of the fact that they've, they've gone no I still don't want to so really it's very encouraging we I've only really been doing this probably about two years now almost um, I've seen an incredible change in heart and people. Um, and I haven't really put that much focus into getting people here because that's not really my thing. What I really felt like I wanted to do was publicize the, the world things because the media was doing such a bad job. Aside from you guys, of course, you're not really the old media, are you? But um, yeah, yeah, Alex, I don't know, Alex, it's my most valuable skill to be using. Yeah, Alex Hills is, is the mastermind behind Candles for Assange. Can you tell us a little bit about why you started Candles for Assange and how you're yeah. keeping track, because there are just so many events happening today yeah. specifically, but it kind of started uh, around Julian's birthday. Well, it actually officially started his 47th birthday. Uh, we, me and Greg, who's speaking in the moment behind us, me and Greg decided that um, a petition, an emergency, very quick fire petition to the parliament to ask for New Zealand to offer Julian asylum here because New Zealand traditionally used to stand up for the little guy. You know, if you think about women's right to vote, women in university, um, homosexuality being legalized, if you talk about nuclear uh, protests and protesting the French bombing, you know, New Zealand always were these people that stood up and that's why I was quite proud. I'm British, Australian and Kiwi. And I was really delighted to be able to move here because I've got very low respect for Australia and Britain at the moment. In fact, I'm on the edge of wanting to burn my two passports. But I mean, New Zealand was a little bit disappointing too because the whole reason I originally got into it was I saw no one was doing a protest here and that's why I had to step up. Yeah. Um, but basically what happened is on his 47th birthday, we announced that we were going to start this asylum petition. And just over there, there's a viral image you might remember in front of the beehive of candles saying free Assange. Well, we got yeah. well known for that. So we got a little bit of a position. So the following year, we just said, oh, we're going to do the same thing again. Yeah, Only this time at the US Embassy. Please, world, join us for a free press protest on Julian's birthday, a birthday vigil, candles for Assange, hashtag. And basically, it went completely mental. I think there was only like two and a half weeks from when I said that to the yes. event. And within a week, it was 50 cities. And within two weeks, it was 62. Um, and I was completely overwhelmed and also sleepless nights, a bit like the last few days, trying to kind of feel like I can't let it down. Now I've said I'm going to do it. There's so many events coming and I'm going to have to try and list them somehow and keep on top of it. But it has been a challenge to do that because, of course, there's lots of easy mistakes to make and you don't really understand some of the languages. So, yeah. Yes, I understand that. Yeah. And you, <laughs> you are a musician who has used music as a form yeah. of your activism. Can you tell us? Yeah. I know you've been a guest before and we've talked about this and you've played on our show, but can you yeah. talk again about why um, you incorporated your music into activism for Julian Assange? Well, I just had someone come up and tell me that Julian Assange is the new Nelson Mandela, open and shut case, you know? And if we think about how Nelson Mandela got freed, I think that music played an amazing role, role in that, don't you? Um, Definitely. You know, we, we, we all remember that song, Free, you know, Nelson Mandela. We tried to sing it yesterday, actually, with uh, Julian Assange. Put him but yeah, so that we've got that. We've got Band Aid. We've got um, music. What it does is it makes you inherently look peaceful. It's very hard to corrupt a candle display. It's very hard to make it look like we're violent if I've got a violin out. Um, even if I was intimidating that policeman that time playing right in his face, it was only because he was interrupting us. And it was difficult for him to get angry at me because I'm playing a violin. So you've got a kind of a little bit more of a poetic life, whereas most protesters find that they eventually get corrupted with someone who wants to be violent and, and cause problems to the movement. But somehow the music and the candles, it just keeps it the peaceful vibe. It keeps it, we're not trying to make any trouble. We're just trying to inform people. Um, and yeah, I think music has the power to heal. Um, and it has the power to cut through to people who wouldn't normally be exposed to that message. Yeah, yeah so. and and one of your songs that you played in pubs, uh, Politics in the Pub last year, yeah. um, Christine Assange actually sent to Julian and he got to see that. Uh, well, yes, that's an interesting story because the reason that I thought suddenly that I could be more powerful than I was just sharing stuff on social media is because I thought Alex Taylor 
um, in London, obscure he is on Twitter. Um, I saw Alex Taylor with a violin being arrested outside the Ecuadorian embassy on Australia yeah. Day. He's Australian and his violin, I think, temporarily confiscated from the armed hard force. And when I saw that and it went through the entire mainstream media because it was so outrageous, I thought, my God, I, I can play violin. I could, I could use my violin to get through maybe just doing some crazy stuff with my violin. And um, then my best friends and I are quite musical and he, he and I came up with that song one day and, and literally we jammed it out and put it on Unity 4J, the very first yeah. cut of the market, playing the jam. That, that, that was a, that an amazing song. Well. Yeah, so anyway, Alex Taylor, he wrote a song uh, with his violin and a beautiful singer called Maria Milwaska. I don't know how to possibly pronounce it. She's got a beautiful, haunting voice. And we produced a song called Let the Like In. It was a kind of Christmas edition WikiLeaks release. And it went nuts. I mean, yes. like, I don't know how many people, but uh, really great. And yeah, so I was playing Wilson Matilda at that pub. So it wasn't my song, but it was kind of a homage both to Alex Taylor for what he did and stood for. But also, you know, a message to Julian, of course. And I was absolutely overwhelmed that Christine wanted to send that to him. So I think, you know, I feel like if he did get that USB stick before when he was in the embassy, he might might have been one of the last things he got to see before. It's true. Um, yeah. yeah, and your song "Let the Light In" personally is a is a an amazing kind of life moment. I, mean, I kind of think I broke down in tears when I saw that tweet. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, and, and yeah, your song "Let the Light In" was a, a huge hit. Um, not only for people that were following Unity for J at the time, but it just seemed to really touch a lot of people in the movement. Yeah, and, and Kathy really Byron. She, yeah, she saw it, and she. I had done a sort of mediocre job of a of a video edit. It was really one of my first ones. Um, and Kathy Vogan loved the song so much. And my second violin part from New Zealand. We called it the uh, Trans Hemisphere Violin Duet. Um, but yeah, so she loved it so much that she, uh, as an academic in film, made a really beautiful recut of it. And she used bits of my stuff too, but she yeah. just kind of made it better. <laughs> Lovely. Well, Alex yeah. Hill, I will let you get back to your event. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining us. For no letting worries. Us Thank you for and, and and You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and everybody, we are going to be streaming. Um, as many events as we can this evening and into tomorrow. Uh, Andrew Smith, Steve Poikinen, and myself, Christy Doff, we will be in DC. We're starting out at the White House and we're gonna march to the DOJ. Um, Yay. So if, you, if you are in the DC area, come on down and join us. We're gonna start off at noon tomorrow. Um, and then we will be streaming and working with Taylor Hudak who is in London covering the events. Uh, so yeah, Alex Hill, thanks so much. And if you have any last no words, let us know where we can follow you and um, oh, yeah. anything else. Okay, so my main Twitter account is Greenweaver Arch because that's my business, believe it or not. That wasn't meant to be an active business account. Um, but the, the ones I'm using the most for the campaign now are Candles for Assange, with the number, Candles for Assange. I've actually just started Rat Bags for Assange, just as a little personal joke. But um, uh, yeah, and then uh, on, on, on Facebook, I'm Alex Hills. And on YouTube, I'm Alex Hills. And there's a whole bunch of music. I did a rogue speech in Parliament for the World Press Freedom Breakfast on 3rd of May, and that was a bit of a coup too, because I don't think the British High Commissioner was was expecting that. And uh, it was quite a nice panel of people. So um, yeah, okay, I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, you're fine. Thank you so much. Have okay. a great action and have a great day. Thank you so much for what you do again. Yeah, cheers. Guys, and in the case of the Guardian, the UK Guardian, back in 2018, they wrote a story. Their journalist Luke Harding wrote a story where he said that Julian Assange met with Manafort. It was a complete fabrication. In November 2016, there was an opinion piece in the Guardian which said, beware of fake news. Mm. What we find is, is that the mainstream media lie to us on many different occasions in true. many different yep. ways. So true. Yep. Lying by partial truth and lying by omission. That is mm. not reporting the facts. Yeah. And it's quite clear that none of the mainstream media are here today 
to mark this occasion, despite the fact that we put out a media release to them last week, and the only one that published it was Scoop. And I've got to hand it to Scoop on behalf of Free Assange New Zealand and other interests. They have been very good at publishing our media releases and making sure that we have a good representation of, or a good, a well-published document that we can mm. share around in social media uh, and 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 for people to see what we're up to. Now, there's 1,200 journalists from around the world. They include the likes of John Pilger, New Zealand's Nikki Hager, and many, many more who are saying that um, Assange or or criminalising Assange's activities is just... Hi there. I'm not sure if I'm live now on Candles for Assange, but I just wanted to give you a report. I've been posting a few things from this morning. We've had an excellent protest so far. I guess we've had about 40 or so people, maybe more, over the course of the two hours. Um, but I've also gone live stream to Washington to Action for Assange, who um, showed footage of us as the first protest around the world. Unfortunately, probably Auckland didn't get the same care, but um, I told them that that was on as well. But anyway, I wanted to give you a report because I've just found out something very disturbing about the New Zealand democracy. Um, I've been here to numerous, numerous marches. I've been here so many times to protest. And I'm trying to think, I don't remember one where um, we were not allowed to hand out pamphlets. I don't remember one where we were specifically not allowed to collect signatures. And I've only just started doing this, but I have been to a number of protests in the past. Uh, climate, uh, TPP, Monsanto. I've never been told in my life that we can't share information between the supporters, like a piece of paper. I've actually, I'm going to do a video one and I'm just going to go around because they can't stop me. I'm going to interview them all and get their numbers on video. But anyway, so we were just informed that the Speaker of the House of this stinking cesspit over here, we like to call the beehive because it kind of looks like one. Isn't that a building of transparency? Look at that. It just screams transparency, doesn't it? Um, anyway. So we were just told that the speaker set the rules for today and someone was handed a piece of paper which said no pamphlets, no getting signatures, no petitions. And I'm just so astounded. I went in to ask them, is this really the law? Can you show me the piece of paper that this is referring from? And they didn't give me any piece of paper and they didn't give me any law, but they tell me that the speaker set the rules today. So I said, well, do you set different rules for different protesters? And they said, I quote, we just want it to be fair for everyone. I mean, am I actually losing my nut here or, or what? I don't know. Anyway, I thought I had just better report there and say, it's been a great protest so far. I didn't have Timothy here playing music with me, so I couldn't do the real lovely song that we normally do. It's kind of me singing this time, but I'll put the video out soon. Um, I couldn't even play the violin while I sing at the same time and I'm not a singer. So, yeah, we'll have the footage for you soon. And I've been interviewed by um, not only Washington Action for Assange, but also uh, Maori Radio again, the Wellington office here. Um, and they're very supportive and that's really lovely. And I've also had some photographers from local papers. Nothing major. We were told RNZ was going to turn up, but no one's come and talked to me. So anyway, I thought I'd just give you that update. Okay, thank you everybody and New Zealand, kicking the world! The beginning, the sun starts here, eh? Bye!